Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about Querétaro, Mexico. These are the quick and dirty version. These aren't gonna be your top tourist destinations. This is not gonna be the definitive guide to Querétaro. This is gonna be Kia's experience for three to four months in 20, 20. This is going to be a little different because this was still during the pandemic, so things are going to be different now. But in terms of overall price, accommodation, the general scheme of things, I think is still relatively similar. So I want to hit you with my take. I have everything timestamp linked up below, and then I'll give you my overall score at the end. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Price. I'm going to give Querétaro a seven. When I was there, you could get a decent apartment out of one bedroom. It was sunny. It was in Centro. So it was like right in the heart of downtown. I think I was paying 450, 400, 450 per month for it. And it was a nice place. Again, it wasn't, you know, super duper, but I was on the second floor. You're going to pay for the location. I can get a little bit bougie. I like a one bedroom. I like a little separate place for my kitchen area. I like a separate place where I can lay down, lay my head, go to the bathroom, do all that business and a little workspace. So for me, 450 is not bad. You're still going to get street food super cheap because in Mexico, you can get a good meal for $10, $15. You can get a nice meal for $20, $30, like really nice rooftops out there. So the price also in terms of taxis, transportation, couple bucks for a DD or an Uber, nothing crazy. Not going to break the bank, but it's also not the cheapest place either. So I'm giving it a seven out of 10 on price. People culture in Querétaro. I'm going to give this an eight. There are cool things to do and see around. I personally, I felt it lacked a little bit sort of like unique food to the place compared to a Oaxaca. If to me, Oaxaca is a gold standard of like a 10, then I'm gonna say to me, kind of, there's probably like a seven or an eight, still amazing food, that's Mexican food. But to me, it didn't feel like as potent as it's like mole and chocolate and mezcal. I mean, you're still in Mexico, it's beautiful. I felt like I could have been in a lot of beautiful Mexican towns compared to when I'm in Oaxaca. I'm like, oh, I'm in Oaxaca and you know it because it's, it's in your face. People incredibly friendly as always Mexican. So they just be killing the game anyway. Getting around infrastructure is good, seven out of 10, because it's not the best, right? It's like the public transportation, it can be a little bit difficult. It's not gonna be in Bangkok or Mexico City or Medellin, where it's like super easy to get around. It can be a little hilly. You might have to use colectivos from time to time, especially if you're headed outside of the city. So to me, again, I'm probably gonna give that more like a 6.5 to a seven. Infrastructure, I would not say is Queretaro's strong suit, but if you're going there, it's not because you want like all the hipster vegan cafes. You're going there because it's beautiful, the people are kind. It's sunny, it's just an inspiring place. I'm gonna give accommodation probably a seven too, but I'd say that accommodation wasn't the easiest to find, but it wasn't the most difficult to find either. I liked my accommodation, it was old, right? It's not gonna be like a lot of modern high rises or places you can just go up and like knock on the door and do month to month rentals. It's not like they have as many gringos like you would in a place like a Chiang Mai or some of these other places in Thailand, Vietnam, and Asia. You're probably gonna have to do Airbnb or something along those lines, maybe a Facebook marketplace, maybe you know somebody, you know somebody. So accommodation, I'm actually gonna bring that down. I'm gonna go with accommodation as a six. So I'm going to accommodation six on that when I'm sticking to it. Dating in the social life in Querétaro is good. I'm gonna put this again at a six, just because there are a ton of people, not like a nomad hub. There are some nomads, some really cool people I know have posted up there, a little bit more long-term. It is a good place, it is a little bit more kind of slow motion. It's not gonna be super crazy over the top party central. The dating, I did have luck dating in Querétaro. You will find some cuties online on the apps. Also just Mexican women in general, you can go up and approach and talk to and they're super kind. But I'm gonna probably put this as a six, just in comparison to a place like a Medellin, a Chiang Mai, Mexico City, something like that. Language, I'm gonna put this in the category of a four or a five. It can be difficult if you don't speak Spanish, this will be a difficult place because not a ton of people speak English. If you speak Spanish, way easier, of course. It's like an eight or nine. If you don't speak Spanish, could be challenging. You've been warned. Queretaro weather, I'm gonna go, I know, seven. I hate to keep doing, I hate to keep hitting sevens. The reason I'm going a seven, six on the weather is because it can get kind of crazy and rainy sometimes, but when it's beautiful, oh my God, it is beautiful. There are mornings I would wake up, I'd walk to the gym, and the way that the sun would come up, I would walk through this plaza and see churches and stuff. I would be walking through and the sun would be coming up and birds would be flying out of trees, and I was like almost moved to tears because it was so incredibly beautiful. So on sunny days, it is gorgeous. It can get a little bit chilly, but for the most part, it's Mexico weather, and here it's the same as many places. It's great for a long time out of the years, but it is pretty nice. Okay. Overall, in terms of Caetaro, I'm going to rate this differently. I'm actually going to hit you with two different types of ratings. For a little bit more long-term living, if you want something slower paced, 
not crazy parties, low key, beautiful, nice place to post up. I'm actually gonna go an eight. I think this place has a lot of potential. If you're looking for like a long-term place to post up, work, have nice little cafes, eat good food, have good culture, that sort of thing. If you are looking for nomad community, nightlife, ease to get around, tall high-rise buildings that run the month rentals, I'm gonna go more like a six, five or a six. Because it has an old school vibe, it has more old school charm, I don't think it has as much of that sort of like vibrant thing that you might find in like a Medellin. It might have changed in the last year, two years, three years. Since I was there, I had very few foreigner friends other than the ones that I knew who had also come to Queretaro at the same time. Just to ruffle some feathers. So that's my kind of overall score for y'all on Queretaro. I hope that that was helpful. As always, one crazy man's opinion don't flame me don't hate me too hard for it but you can let me know what you think in the comments below like subscribe smash all the buttons i'm gonna check you on the next one thanks for tuning in as always peace